Hello folks, welcome to another video on the channel. You are watching me flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator using the Vario Aero with my latest OpenXR Toolkit settings, which we're going to talk about. In fact, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get cracking. But first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of your wonderful support on the channel recently. It really means a lot. And if you haven't subscribed yet, well, 80% of you are still not subscribed. So please feel free to share the love so I can keep making content well into the future. Right, first of all, let's talk about some big news from Vario themselves. There is a new version of the Vario based software for Aero owners. And in my view, are you ready? Are you sat down? This has pretty much almost completely eliminated any possible distortion issues that people have been experiencing. That's right, folks. Honestly, this has been the biggest update to date. I don't want to say it's completely gone because I'm sure someone might still see a little bit of it, but really, they have done an amazing job here, and I cannot detect any distortions at all. Um, and this raises a point, really. I know of a few um, Vario Aero owners that have decided to uh, sort of refund their unit well i'm sorry folks but that was a bad move because i knew this update was coming but i couldn't say anything but it's made a huge difference and no doubt i'm going to get comments below of vario aero owners who are going to be extremely happy with this update what the engineers have done is a massive difference it's a huge difference folks it feels just like any other fresnel based headset however you get the spherical lens design which means you get edge-to-edge -edge clarity now how do you enable this new feature um, with this new distortion profile well once you've downloaded the vario based software from your account go into your system tab as you can see here go right to the bottom and you'll see a new tab that says experimental new distortion correction enable that the headset will restart and then jump into perhaps Microsoft Flight Simulator and enjoy. <laughs> it really is that good. Um, I can't say, you know, enough about this particular distortion profile. It has really made a massive difference. Now, other things that they've changed as well is within the headset tab itself. The image quality setting, this is where sometimes the headset will ask to calibrate the eye tracking and favorited rendering and sometimes you'll have to look at the dot that can get a little bit annoying sometimes if you're taking the headset on and off now i'm pleased to say that you now have an option for remember my calibration or best estimation and that's the one i use actually remember my calibration because um, i find that works perfectly and that means whenever you take the headset on and off it, you don't have to keep looking at the dot all the time that's perhaps more of a minor feature but a quality of life upgrade which i do appreciate um, I think also we need to talk about the OpenXR Toolkit, folks. That is really important. As you can see here from this footage, I am flying over the west coast. I'm getting 50 frames per second with the Vario Aero right now. That is absolutely incredible. And here are my settings. Now, something to keep in mind, these are my recommended settings. See them as a guide because every system is different. You can get the same system and you'll still get different results okay so i cannot say that these are going to be the best for you these work for me and i think what the big deal is here for the vario aero is again the fixed favorited rendering and here i've got my inner ring size at 75 percent um, with the outer resolution at 1 8 with the 85 percent option um i actually I, you can go down to 80 percent and i find that you don't see any uh, sort of weirdness on the edges. Also for my NIS scale, I actually take the sharpness down to 20% and the NIS at 90%. Uh, I haven't really noticed the difference between NIS and FSR, I've tried both of them. Now, something to also keep in mind, folks, um, I don't think the Vario Aero really benefits from the OpenXR toolkit like the Reel of G2 does. And the reason is, is the Vario based software runs more on your GPU anyway. So it runs better than the Reverb G2 out of the box, which I've, I've got videos on that, as you probably have seen. So the sort of performance benefit, it's probably between about seven to nine frames per second that I've measured. That's still very, very good. However, I feel with the NIS scaler uh, portion of this OpenXR toolkit enabled, the sharpness of the Vario Aero actually suffers. I think it's worse with it. 
I also think the colors are more faded. However, you can change that with your, you know, all the settings within the OpenXR toolkit, including saturation, contrast, all that, all that good stuff as well. But I think, you know, I am going to use the NIS scaler, particularly when I'm flying low down, because those extra sort of nine frames per second, they get me to a 50 frames per second sort of uh, ballpark which is super, super smooth, I have to say. But I think generally speaking, I'm probably going to not use the NIS scaler, but I'll always have the fixed foliated rated rendering set at those figures because that definitely, you know, makes a difference to the performance on its own. So really that's my views really with the Vario Aero. It's already so sharp that even that slight loss of visual fidelity, it still looks amazing with the OpenXR toolkit, don't get me wrong, it just doesn't look quite as sharp as it does when it's completely native. However, the trade-off is you get those extra nine frames per second, which in VR, as you know, that's a big deal. In terms of my in-sim settings, well, actually you'll notice they're exactly the same as the Reverb G2. However, thank you to many of the people in the comments that have confirmed, and it actually is in the OpenXR toolkit manual as well, that you need to disable light shafts that will get rid of the strange lines that may appear when you're using the uh, app. Now, at the time of recording, this is beta 3 version 1.0.1. I honestly cannot believe the experience I'm getting in this headset now and the Reva G2. It's superb. Now for the final topic, and this again is about the Vario Aero, and it's all about comfort. And I admit, I was wrong, folks. I was wrong because I said to Studio Form, <laughs> okay, which is uh, they're, they're a fantastic company that produce counterbalance kits for all VR headsets, as I'm sure you know, the Reva G2 crowd and the Pimax crowd. Um, he wanted me to try the counterbalance kit for the Vario Aero, and I actually said it doesn't really need it because it's already really comfortable. Well, he sent me one anyway. I've also got the Apache strap, and when I was fitting this onto it, I, I couldn't believe the extra weight of the aero. It makes it quite heavy. But all of that faded into insignificance, as you can see there from the uh, footage of me flying. This is part of a three hour flight around the UK I did today. Uh, and I was so comfortable, like properly comfortable. I couldn't believe it. And I think a lot of it has to do with that weight at the back it means that there's absolutely zero pressure on the front of my nose. But also due to that halo strap, it means I can take the headset off, which I'm gonna do now, as you can see. I'm gonna drink my coffee. Now before, if I did that, the sort of um, strap at the back of the headset, I'd have to adjust it again to get it back on my head. Don't need to do that, I just pop it back on like a baseball cap and I'm good to go. And even better than that, folks, I've got a discount code for any VR headset on their website. So whether it's the Vario Aero, the Reva G2 or the Pimax, or the Quest, put in this code you can see on the screen now and you will get a nice little 5% discount. Right folks, I think that's gonna be it for today. The big news for me, I think in this video, is that the Vario Aero is now completely distortion free, particularly in the OpenXR platform anyway. I still think DCS has some ways to go, but IL2 is fantastic, Aerofly FS2, um, Half-Life Alex is amazing. Um, I just think that this headset is, is it's just a start. It's going to get better and better. There's some really exciting updates coming and I cannot wait to share plenty more in the future. Take care, folks. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.